Welcome to everyone joining us today. We're really delighted to have you with us. I'm going to give a little background about this um, steering committee and what it might mean for the country before we hear from the minister and then talk to you in a little more detail. So Consumers Health Forum has a very strong view that the voices of young people need to be heard more often, particularly in policy conversations. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that there are lots of decisions that governments make, state, federal and local, that can impact on the way that you lead your life. So can you find housing? Are the things being taught to you at school, things that are really useful for you? Do you feel safe to be who you want to be in your local community? Well, what kinds of services do you think the government should be funding for young people? And are the services that are in place right now super helpful for you? Or are there some key things that would make it a whole lot better that perhaps made a lot of sense to an old person, but make not a lot of sense to young people? I remember a year or two ago having a conversation with some health professionals. And they were saying that, you know, when you come to see a health professional, the first consultation must be face to face. After that, if you want to do something that's mediated through Zoom or telephone, it's fine. But the first conversation must be face to face. They felt that that would be the only way to build rapport and for you to feel safe. And I challenged them on this. I said, my children, and I have three, would probably be more comfortable first getting to know someone via some kind of social media because that's what they do in their daily life. And in fact, sometimes face to face, particularly with a person that, who might perceive themselves to be of authority, can actually not feel safe at all. And so it's those kind of conversations that really need to be had at a national level. So the minister new in her role has decided that that's exactly what she wants to hear. She wants to bring the voices of young people through this steering committee into what, when we call them policy conversations, they might sound a bit dull, but honestly, they're conversations about how you lead your life. And if you pay tax, how someone spends your money. So we're very keen to support you to think about applying for this committee and more broadly, we're keen for you to think about stepping up to be a national leader because we need more young people to do exactly that. So uh, I think Louise is going to push a button on a short video that the minister has for us. And then we'll talk a little bit more, Rox will talk and then I'll talk a little bit more about how to put yourself out there. You're just on mute, I think, please. Sorry, thank you. Actually, Rox, if we could go to you for the moment, um, if you could share um, yeah, a little bit about yourself, if you could go to you, that would be great. No problem. Um, I'm super excited to be here um, to talk about my experiences and hopefully they might be a little bit helpful for any, uh, any of you who might be applying or thinking about stepping up into national leadership roles. Um, so I've been doing youth health advocacy work and being in advisory roles for about six or seven-ish years now. Um, I initially got involved through my local Headspaces youth advisory group, uh, working on more kind of local projects. Uh, and it was through that that I heard about uh, Origin's Youth Advisory Council. So that's Origin, the... Um, uh, youth mental health organization in Melbourne, not the energy company, very important distinction. Um, so that was like the first big national role I ever applied for, um, and the first kind of role with a significant commitment. And I was so excited about applying. Um, and then was really, really sad when I um, was actually unsuccessful in my application. Um, so yeah, I was really upset about that at the time and ended up kind of focusing more back more on my local projects. And then two years later, uh, the same opportunity came around again for the, um, the next cohort of the Youth Advisory Council. Uh, I applied again and was successful. Uh, and that was like a really, like I loved my time on the Advisory Council. So I guess from that, like that's one major thing I've learned about uh, for councils and committees is that selection panels are looking at more than just the individual. They have like an emphasis on getting the right mix of people as well. So 
just because you're not successful the first time doesn't necessarily mean you're not a great fit for the role or for being on the committee and that you can't be successful if you apply again. Um, I think going into roles like this, it's, it's nice to know some of the challenges that you might face and some of the cool aspects of, the, um, of being involved in these kinds of opportunities as well. Um, for me, the, you're often working over distance in these kind of roles um, and that can be kind of challenging. Uh, I think I've learned that it's very important to ask questions when you don't understand something because a lot of the time you might not have some important context. Um, and if you just have no idea what's going on like and you just are feeling really unsure that it's so okay to um, contact someone and ask and be like, I have no idea what's going on. Um, and that, that's a really important thing. Uh, the other kind of challenging thing with roles like this is that sometimes that you might, you might give advice to someone and something you might have a really strong, like you might be really passionate about and the people who give you, you are giving advice to, they go another way and they, um, they go a different path than you might go. And that can be kind of frustrating. Uh, I haven't had it happen a lot of times. It's not a super common thing, but it is kind of a frustrating thing that can happen um, as part of being in committees like this, but also a really normal thing. Um, onto the cool stuff. Um, there are so many cool parts of being in um, committees and on advisory councils and things like this. Um, so I've met like the most amazing people from all of my um, roles that I'm so lucky to have been a part of and some of them are still like really great friends. Uh, I think another really great thing is that you learn a ton, you gain a lot of skills and you actually get to explore like optional, like options for career paths that you might like, or you might explore something and find that actually that's not something you like. So you get to try out something new. But um, my absolute favorite part of getting involved with things like this is when you have been working really, really hard on like a project or something. And then you get to see that project like come to life and be like an in real life thing that actually has an impact on people's lives and you get to see that it's like such a great feeling um, and definitely my favorite part. And I think that's a really big part of why it's so important young people are involved in communities like this and are at the table when there are decisions being made that affect us. Um, we know our own lives best. And I think young people are creative and passionate and they challenge ideas and have really unique perspectives. So I think getting involved is like a really awesome opportunity personally, but also really important for like all young people in Australia to have um, like a pathway for that voice to be involved in these decision-making spaces. Um, last, I have three, uh, tips about applying for roles um, like when you're making an application for something like the Youth Steering Committee. Uh, one is sometimes you don't get a copy of your application. So make sure to save your answers before you press submit uh, for two reasons. First, sometimes you interview after your application. Um, not all the time, but sometimes you do. So it's good to know what you've said. Second, um, if you spend a ton of time writing like the most perfect, excellent answer to something, um, you might want to use that answer again in the future for another application. Um, so definitely say your answers. Two, kind of similar, um, but write down some like in a document or something, any cool project or initiative that you get involved in, like that can be through school or TAFE, or it could even be a personal hobby. Um, they can all be relevant to an application for something like this. But when you're actually writing your answers, sometimes it can be hard to like remember like anything you've been involved in. So if you have a document with 
cool things you've done. Like that's really easy to refer to. And third is don't undersell yourself and be your own hype person. Uh, sometimes I think some people feel really uncomfortable like with applications and really selling themselves. Um, I know some people, one thing that they do is they write their answers in third person and they might write like their best friend's name or something um, in drafting their answers. Very important that you change it back to first person in your own name. Very important to do that afterwards. But like just doing that kind of helps them like really sell themselves in their answers. So those are my three tips. Um, uh, good luck in your applications. And I'm gonna hand back to Louise. Thank you so much. Uh, so great to hear your perspectives on everything. And those tips are amazing. Um, when you shared those with me, I they make a whole lot of sense and I'm so glad to hear them and they're things that I'm going to do as well. Um, Elizabeth, um, are you able to share that video with us? Just a moment and I'll see what I can do. Um, and I wanted to say Rox is awesome just while we're um, thanking her. And you've got her here, those, those of you that are online, if you've got questions you'd like to ask her, just pop them in the chat and then, um, or raise your hand. You can see down the bottom of the screen, there's a little hand, you can raise it, um, or you can put into the chat that you've got a question and you can have a conversation with Rox right now. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to just find the video and see if I can share it on the screen. So any, uh, Louise, can you just look out for any questions for Rox while I do this? Oh, definitely. So I'm curious about what got you curious about wanting to talk to us today, Rox. Um, well, I was, I was actually looking at the application last night and I guess have been thinking over the last couple of weeks, just like what an awesome opportunity this is, like to have that direct conversation with the minister and with government and stuff. And I think sometimes like it's hard to imagine ourselves in roles like this, especially if we don't know anyone who's done it before or like it can seem kind of like really scary. So um, if there's any way that I can like, I don't know, like provide any like even like hype as well as like um, helpful advice to have to get somebody applying who might not have applied otherwise. Um, yeah, so I mean, thank you for inviting me. No, it's, it's always great to hear from you. And I think you're right, like we don't often get an opportunity to talk to other people who are applying to things. We don't know what other people's processes are and we don't know what their thoughts and feelings are about going into something like this and where they might stumble and whether that aligns with where we might be stumbling or finding things difficult or maybe finding things easy as well. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like at least when I first applied, like, like I couldn't find any information online about like how do you respond to these kind of questions? Like what are people actually looking for when they're reading through my answers as well? Like kind of like I guess I was approaching it like a lot like an essay, like what like what are my teachers wanting from me? Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's an interesting point too because, you know, often um, there will be, uh you know maybe an email address or a phone number where you can you know make contact and ask some of those questions and i often find that people do appreciate being asked those questions maybe it's because you know that particular piece of information that they take for granted um hasn't you know been provided in the blurb about what it is that people are applying for or maybe it's something that they haven't thought about altogether um i often like to you know, when I'm applying for things, uh, get a bit more of an idea about um, accessibility um, and about what their culture is like there. Um, maybe it involves figuring out how many hours they want people to be um, 
you know, involved for or for how long it might be. Or, yeah, you know, uh, we're learning more and more about the steering committee. And so we're going to be finding more out about this. But also, I think this is going to be a really interesting opportunity to share and to create, you know, the culture and the practices for the steering committee itself. So, yeah, being able to actually talk to people about this, I think, can be about application processes is really valuable. Absolutely. And everyone has their own experiences with it too. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to check in, Elizabeth, how you went, because I think I actually also have the video. If um, yeah, I've got it here. I'm going to try and share it now, okay? I'm awesome. just having a great chat and I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> so let me try right now. See if we can share this. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to press play. Hello, Youth Health Forum. I'm so sorry I can't be with you in person today, but I wanted to wish you well for your event. As young people, you are the future of this country. And so it's critical that you're able to have a genuine say in what that future looks like. That's why, as Minister for Youth, I'm happy to announce applications are now open for the Youth Steering Committee. The committee will give young people greater input in shaping government decisions and policies that matter to them. It will bring together young people from diverse backgrounds, personal experiences and knowledge. As young leaders who are already affecting change across our health system, I'd encourage you to apply. You can find more information on the Australian Youth Affairs Coalition website. I'm wishing you all the very best for today and I hope to see many of you soon. Bye. There we go. Um, so that was the minister. I noticed we've got somebody asking what kinds of issues will the committee focus on? And I, um, I might just make a go at answering that for you in that it's new. I don't think anyone knows what the committee is going to do and it will be shaped in part by its membership and the conversations that are had. So will it focus on discrimination? Will it focus on, um, you know, giving people a greater, giving young people a greater voice politically? Will it focus on, um, I don't know, local problems in, in marginalised communities? Um, the conversations that happened in that room will really shape what the committee is going to talk about. So if you're passionate about something and change, whether it is climate change, mental health services, um, diversity in government, whatever it is, this could be the conversation. We just need you to be there and start it. Um, um, Fantastic. Thanks for that too. If people have got questions there in the chat, Reese, thanks for that. That's really helpful too. Um, so, Louise. I was just going to say, uh, uh, Reese has just said um, that he knows that it's a Q&A, but uh, there are some applicants or their parents that uh, can contact Reese with any concerns. Um, his email address is reese at ayac.org. Dot au and that's Reese R E E C E, uh, and so that might be helpful to share with everyone. So thank you, Reese. We really appreciate you sharing that. We're, we're grateful that you're on today. So Louise, will we talk about the process now? Do you want me to just talk about the kind of key things that you might do in preparing? And I, I want to follow on with from uh, something that you and Rox are talking about, which is people perhaps not feeling that they're the right fit. So there is a lot of really good research nowadays that shows a couple of things. First, it shows that women tend not to apply for things unless they have 120% of all of the things they think they need. And interestingly, people who identify as men tend to be happy to do that when they've got about 50 or 60% of the things you need for a job. So this is research into employment, translates into this too. So you don't have to be the perfect candidate to be the successful candidate. And often you do have more than that 60 or 70%. You just can't see it because there are parts of yourself that it's really hard for you to identify. 
And that can be true, particularly when it's perhaps not culturally appropriate. So in some cultures, it's not appropriate to talk about how great you are. It's more about your community or it's more about other people. And so you may feel actually even uncomfortable about saying, oh, I have this, this and this trait. And that's where, again, talking to Reese and saying, well, from a cultural perspective, this is difficult for me to do. Can somebody else, could an auntie, could some leader help me or um, speak on my behalf? And I'm sure that the organisers will be open to making sure that you felt culturally safe in applying. So think about that. But we also know there will be a lot of cultural norms built into all of this. Again, some of the questions, the language might privilege people of colour um, or might not privilege people of colour. It might be privileged people who have particular genders or other aspects of diversity. And so even if the words don't seem quite like the words you're used to, we really hope that you don't think that that means you shouldn't be there because you absolutely should be there. And we would encourage you and support you to apply um, because we actually need people like you. Now, there are some things that I would normally do if I was going to apply for something like this. They're pretty straightforward. And some of them may be things you've already done, but I'm gonna run through, through a few of these just to give you some ideas. So if an opportunity comes up like this for me, and as Rox has spoken about, one of the first things I do is I actually have a look on the website where the applications are broadly at it. I check it out. I look for things like, are all the images showing old, white, rich people? Because that's a bit of a giveaway that's not particularly diverse. And if someone hasn't thought about that, it's not great. Doesn't mean you don't engage, but you go in knowing what their kind of um, culture is within a business. Is the language on the website the kind of thing that you can't understand or you think maybe you can, but a lot of people couldn't understand? Um, when you look, you might look to see who's in the governance positions, you know, who is on their board or their councils, perhaps you know some of those people, or you've heard of them. You might look, um, they'll often have things that talk about their kind of, they use words like mission or vision or purpose, where they talk about what it is they're trying to do. And again, have a look at that and see how enabling the language is. If it sounds like they're trying to do things to other people rather than with people, that's a bit of a warning sign for me too. So, you know, spend some time when you're on the bus or waiting for something to just flick through, have a browse. It can be a bit random. It doesn't have to be, you know, very logical. Just look through and get a feel for it. Does it feel like the kind of organisation you want to be involved with? If you think it is, then also, if you've looked at the lists, if there's anyone that you know, or you think someone you know might know, reach out to them and say, I'm interested in this. What can you tell me about it? It's really common for people to do that. It's also common for people to ask other people to have a look. So if Rox was interested in being on a committee, she might reach out to Louise and say, check this out. What do you think? Do you think it'd be good for me? So don't be afraid to ask other people if they think you're a fit. Ask other people to have a look at the website or the application to see if it sounds like it's you. That might give you a little more confidence when everyone says, you would be awesome, then to go ahead and actually fill in the application rather than being concerned that perhaps it's not something that you would be involved with. Um, also, if you um, have a resume or something like that, then have a look at it and make sure that you update it so that the experiences you've got, and Rox, I love your idea of having a space in the notes on your phone or something where you just jot down things when you do them so that when you go to fill something like this, you've got a whole list. Think about the ones that are most relevant. Now, some of you will already have resumes of some kind. The important thing to keep in mind is that these are just a summary of everything you've ever done. So what I do is I actually have a master one that's got everything. And then when I'm applying for something, I just cut and paste out the things that are relevant for that job. People don't need to know necessarily that I did. Um, I used to teach ballroom dancing for debutante sets 20 years ago. It might be completely irrelevant to some roles. It's true, I actually did. But it might be really relevant for another role. So feel free to actually curate your CV or your resume for the position. And there's nothing wrong with leaving things out or emphasising particular things when you can see they've got a really close relationship to the kind of work that's being done. 
Similarly, sometimes they'll ask for a picture of you. Um, we often call it a headshot. So um, good to have a good one. You tend to find somewhere that's well lit with a pretty boring background. Could be a park or a blank wall or something like that. I like it to have a little bit of color myself. And then to be dressed in clothes that are appropriate for whatever it is. If you're applying for a rowing club thing, you might wear your rowing gear. If it's a footy thing, you might wear your footy colors. Generally, it's not um, the, the done thing to put like a glam shot or a shot of you, you know, sculling a beer um, as your um, shot. But again, it depends. If it was for a party organizer, perhaps that would be the perfect shot. So just think about whether I've got a good photo, if I've only got selfies that are a bit blurry, get a friend to take you a nice photo um, so that if they ask for that, you've got that ready to go. Um, and, uh, and so that you're kind of pretty prepared. Then um, once you've done this, the next step is to apply. And as Rock said, sometimes they'll ask you to um, fill in a form. So in this case, there's an online application. Sometimes they'll ask you to send in a resume as well as do that, or sometimes you'll send a resume instead of an application. Sometimes you'll be asked to write what's sometimes called a cover letter. So this is a letter that you attach with your resume. And the cover letter is where you talk about yourself and why you're relevant for this role. Um, some places will ask you instead to do a video, five minute video talking about why you want to do something. Again, worth thinking about that. And much as Rock said, you know, if you've done the perfect thing, save it. You might take a few videos and even edit up the best bits of those to get something that looks good. Um, and you might also have to have an interview of some kind um, that could be virtual or could be face to face. Um, this is done to make sure that um, you've got an opportunity to meet the people that you'd be working with and ask them lots of questions and feel more comfortable. And there are heaps of examples of how to do these things on the web, on YouTube on the, and the like. So have a look around and you'll find people that will give you tips on how to write a resume, how to take a, a, a headshot, what the key steps are in a cover letter, how to create a great five minute video. I'm not talking about a reel for TikTok here, something a bit longer and it probably won't involve a dance. Though personally, I'm a big fan of dancers. So I say if there's an opportunity dance and ask other people to look at it once you've done it because they will see as i said before things about you that you may not realize they might add in some great extra points that you hadn't thought about and give you examples so examples that you might not have on your list of things that you've done that make you the ideal person it's really common to draft up responses, share it with other people before you actually put an application in. Um, always remember to use spell check and grammar checks on your work before you send it off. Someone sent me an important message um, yesterday and they, they didn't spell check, which is, you know, fine. But what I got in their message was, um, I'm feeling dirty, which is not actually what they meant to write and didn't make me smile. Um, so sometimes words can be there that you don't mean to be there. So good to check all of that before you send it off. And uh, uh, we mentioned this earlier, I think Rox talked about, you know, not getting in the first time she applied for something. It's really important to keep that all in mind because you won't always be the successful person. So I like to say um, that when I do these things, I'm always doing a um, practice run. It's always I'm trying. If I don't, if I don't get it, it's okay. I'm just learning, I'm learning how to apply, and maybe I have to apply for two things or ten things before I'm successful. So if we start off thinking this is an opportunity to learn how to do this and we're not successful, then we still feel like we got something because we learned something through the process. Where if we think the idea is, is kind of, it's like winning and then we're not successful, we can sometimes take it hard. And, you know, Rox, I really feel you when you said I didn't get that committee. I've applied for things, I didn't get them either. Honestly, and I'm going to be pretty frank now, often there is what I like to call the color-coded spreadsheet, which is, um, exactly that 
um, trying to make sure we've got a diversity of people in a particular group. So with the applications, I would guarantee that in this group, they will be wanting people who are gender diverse. They will be wanting some people who are First Nations. They will be wanting people who are um, first language is not English. They will be wanting people from all over Australia. They're wanting people potentially who experience disability or ill health. And so it's not just, am I the best applicant? Because there might be 10 people whose characteristics or demographics are very similar to yours. And then having been on the other side of these committees, sometimes it's really hard to choose. Because you've got all these fantastic people. And if you've got clumps of people that are really similar, you might decide, well, we need somebody like that. And it just might not happen to be you that time. But it does not mean that you're not great. It does not mean that you wouldn't have been fantastic on the committee. And keep, keep applying is what we'd say. Keep applying because if you're keen, someone will see your value and you will be the right person on the spreadsheet one day and get your opportunity. So it is, it is hard if you don't get, I think we're saying 10, and Reese might tell me, but I think there's something between 10 and 15 people on the committee. And, and we've got, um, we had about 40 people apply for this webinar. So there'll be other people who will look at this after we download it and more. So maybe 100 people will look at what we're saying today. Well, only one in 10 will be selected. Doesn't mean they don't all have something to offer. Um, so do try and keep that in mind because, you know, for my mind, for you to be disheartened and give up because you think there's something about what you did was the reason you weren't um, successful rather than the government is being very careful at making sure that the committee represents a whole lot of different kinds of young people is important. Now, I see we've got some questions in the chat. Louise, do you want to tell, um, let me know who might best respond to those? Me, Rox, you? Yeah, so the two questions that I see in the chat are about what the committee is focused on and also um, Reese putting his hand up to uh, talk to people if they have further questions about the application. Um, are there other hands or questions up there that you can see? No, I can't see any others. But if you've got questions, again, just okay. ask. That's what we're here for today, to help you understand the process and also, I think, to make you feel confident. We believe in you and we want you to believe in yourself and put yourself forward so that you can represent um, people like you on this committee and make a difference. So will we run through the questions themselves now? Louise, will you be able to put the PowerPoint up or would you like me to try and do that? Yeah, I can uh, put, so, so the people at home there, I'm working from someone else's computer um, as of the very last minute. So I'm just seeing where everything is. Um, I can put the screen up. We could also screen share the actual application itself. Would that be something that would be useful? Um, partly also because there is a function to be able to have a look at the questions but not actually have to answer them or we can choose to answer them as we go. So mm. maybe that might be a useful way. Um, would anyone like to volunteer in the chat uh, whether they've had a look at the application process? And, and maybe if not, then that, so I've got someone who's raised their hand. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Maybe this would be a good time to, yeah, go through the actual questions. We can run through the first set very quickly and then have a look at the last four questions, which are short answer questions, which do have a 250 word, um, like word limit, but, to invite some really interesting sort of reflections. So I'll just bring that up now. So this is the, um, the first page that you'll come to on the uh, Australian Government Youth Steering Committee's um, application. So we're going to press start. Talks about consent and privacy. Uh, if you have a look down the bottom here on the screen, there is uh, an up and down arrow. 
And this is great because it does allow you to have a look at the questions before you start to answer them and to take notes of anything that you might find a little bit interesting or difficult or tricky uh, that you want to come back to. It does also allow you to edit your answers as well. Um, so, you know, we're looking at uh, if you're comfortable sharing your answers, yes or no. Um, Elizabeth, if you have any thoughts about how we're going through this, please, or oh, Rox as well, please, please share. Um, now, yeah, I'm going to ask you about uh, your range of experiences and skills too. But we'll do things like ask for your first and last name. And I'll also ask your date of birth. Now, if you uh, submit a birthday, which uh, means that you're over 18, amazing. If you're, say, 11 to 17, it's going to ask you a few other questions that you'll need a parent or guardian to answer. So, for instance, if I go, uh, Two thousand and nine. Um, maybe that one will pop up in a little bit, but I do like that uh, it allows you to um, best describe your gender, also your pronouns, uh, an email address, and so this is so that people can contact you uh, further down the track. Uh, your phone number as well. Um, the state or territory that you currently live in, uh, your postcode. Um, this question also checks to see whether or not you'll be available for the uh, first meeting of the Youth Steering Committee. Now, this page is pretty great. It asks about what applies to you. So this is your opportunity to share, you know, in a tick box um, way, uh, you know, a little bit about you and your experiences and where you're from and, you know, what, it, what is relevant to you, what is important to you and how you experience the world. Uh, this one, you know, a little bit more about you as well. Um, this one here, question M, do you have any, any accessibility requirements? And actually, Elizabeth, I'd love if you have any um, anything you'd like to share on that as well. Uh, you know, what sort of um, things might you look for or want to hear about? Sure. So this is again about making you feel comfortable and safe. So. And this is something that you could potentially talk to Reese about. He mentioned he is available if you've got questions. Um, we would assume that where they're going to run the sessions will be uh, physically accessible and that there'll be other technology there for you, for you. But if there's something special you need, you can pop it in here and I'm sure you could also reach out directly and say, would this work for me? Um, and people can have all kinds of needs. Maybe they're um, concerned about things that are not common. So if there's anything that, that might trouble you, I would reach out. You can either put it in there um, or you could reach out directly and say, I'm interested in applying, but this, is this going to you know, be an issue? And I'm sure that the group that are um, working through the process will be super supportive of you and help understand what it is that you need. Beautiful, thank you for sharing about that. Um, we go. If you're currently 18 years or older, uh, again, if you uh, press no, then it will um, ask you a few questions or will uh, ask you to get your parent or guardian to answer a few questions. Um, uh, so again, are you available to travel? Just scrolling through now. Here we go. So this is the short answer questions. The first one here, um, Elizabeth, I'd love if you had any thoughts and rocks as well about how someone might go about 
when you're responding to this question. So the question is, what do you think are the two most important issues for young people in Australia? And why do you think these issues are important? And then down the, just below that, it says, you can include any relevant personal experience related to these issues. Um, I was looking at this question yesterday and kind of reflecting on how I might answer it. Um, and I think, I mean, there isn't a right answer that people are looking for. Like, what is it like? I think it's in, it's really great to reflect on what are you really passionate about and what matters to you? Because then you'll be able to show that passion through your answer. Um, so, so what are the most important issues for young people like in your life and in your community? Like that really matters. Yeah, I, I agree, Rox. This is your opportunity to say what you think is important. And someone earlier on asked in, you know, what is the committee going to focus on? Well, it's going to focus on what you say it needs to focus on. So if you're passionate about climate change, if you're passionate about better health services in the bush, if you're passionate about more inclusive educational experiences, this is your opportunity to say that. You know, I think the most important thing is, or the two most important things are, and this is why. And yeah, you know, speak. I would encourage you to speak from the heart and give examples. Thank you very much. All right, and I, I think I, you know, would would love to hear the same again. So, um, yeah, I mean, why, why, how would you advise that someone, you know, talk about why they want to join the youth steering committee? So the question is. Why would you like to join the Youth Steering Committee? And underneath that, it says, you can include any personal experience and what you would like to achieve by joining the Youth Steering Committee. And so I think here you could link this to your previous question. If you said, let's say, for example, I'm really passionate about getting more inclusive mental health services in remote areas of Australia, that's one of my two things from the last question. Then you might talk about this here and say you want to make sure that um, you have the opportunity to talk to the people who spend the money and tell them how the services are working for you locally and what you'd like to see change. Um, and I think uh, it's important for you to talk about how you'd like to make a difference here. So you if you think about going to this you'll need to go to Canberra for a few days it might mean you miss out on some school things or perhaps you miss out on a party or um, it might be difficult for you if you're a carer so what what really would make you give up your life for a few days and go to a committee that's my question whatever that is that's what needs to go in here I'd really like to be at the committee and often it's because I'm concerned that if I'm not there raising these key issues that are important to me I'm not sure that anyone else will so I want to make sure that they get on the table and the way to make sure the information is on the table is for you to actually be there and speak your truth. I think like to add to that, yeah, I definitely think like, I think these two questions in particular, like where you show why you're passionate and why you care. And I, I wanted to add two things, which is one, I know for me, whenever I am applying for things, especially when like 250 words is like a chunk, like that's like a solid chunk and you kind of want to edit and make sure it kind of flows nice and it's all, all lovely and stuff. Like you might not fully know the answer when you first come to the question. It's okay to kind of like take some time over a couple of days and think about it and that's what I'm doing. Um, and I think the... Second thing for me, like in questions like this, I make sure to go back to um, any informa information I can find about the Youth Steering Committee. Um, what do I know about it? What are its goals? So I know this Youth Steering Committee is going to be important in um, setting up further like youth engagement, um, like uh, ways that other young people in Australia can engage with the government and in policy as well so um, I know that for me that's like something that's really um, like that I'm really passionate about so I might mention that here or like so yeah so doing the research so I can also make sure that I'm answering why I want to apply 
to this specific youth steering committee and not just any youth steering committee. Fantastic. Thank you both very much. All right, we have two more questions. The next one is, what personal experiences and skills would you bring to the Youth Steering Committee? And underneath that, it says, you don't need to have any previous experience to apply. So what do you, if you're working in a group, maybe it's a school project or um, something you've done um, with church youth group, what kind of people do you want in the group? I usually say people who can play nicely. So you might want to talk about how you're a team player, you're good at collaborating, you're good at listening, you're good at sharing, you're the kind of person that's happy to do the tasks that need to be done. Perhaps you'll talk about the fact that because your background or experience is different from any others, you'll bring some diversity, a different perspective to things, different cultural views on things. So you think about the experiences that you've had and you talk about them. Why am I, why would it be great to hear from me? Um, I just want to add, like, this is the question that I always struggle with the most. Like, it feels really hard to really, like, choose very specific skills. And um, I think it's important to acknowledge the, um, knowledge and skills that come from that lived experience of whatever that is, if you are disabled, if you um, are a First Nations young person, if you have um, experiences of caring, that the knowledge and skills that comes from that come from those things are really valuable things um, and worth mentioning. And I think this is the bit where it's really great to ask somebody else. If I was on this committee, what do you think I'd bring? And they might say things like, you're a really good problem solver. And you go, am I? Yes, you are. So if the group's got a problem in front of them, you'll be the person to help untangle the knots. Or they might say, you're a great listener and you really encourage people to speak. Oh, do I? Yes, you do. Okay, maybe I could put that. So I agree, this kind of talking about yourself, there's only a very small group of people who like to talk about themselves. And often the rest of us don't like to be around those people too much. So it can be challenging to write like this. That's why I think asking a community leader, a friend, um, somebody that you trust, whether it's uh, you know, a youth worker or a, a school um, leader, what, what would you think I'd bring to something like this? Or what have I brought to other things that I've done that can be really helpful? I actually love that advice and I'm definitely going to try it um, even though it does feel a little bit scary maybe to ask someone like why am I great like I think that's like such great advice it is great advice I'm loving these these uh reflections and answers this is great so the last question that um is here on the uh, application is uh do you have any experience volunteering or participating in advisory groups? If yes, tell us about your experiences. And underneath that, it says you don't need to have any previous experience to apply. So I'm curious about how you'd both, um, you know, look at this question. And I think the word advisory groups might be a bit um, daunting too, because it's very kind of technical language. You've probably done this. So if you've been in a group, say, in your school where you sat around and talked about how money would be spent from a fundraiser, you've been in an advisory group. If in a sport you play, you sat down and talked about, you know, the social activities that might occur or the other work that you might do to support the club more broadly, you've been in an advisory group. So if you've been in a group where you've sat and talked about issues, shared your ideas and those issues have then been listened to by somebody else, you've been in an advisory group. So it doesn't need to be uh, some special government thing. I mean, if you have been in one of those, as Rox has been, put it down, go for it. But if, again, it's about feeling like, well, I've only done this. Is this what it means by advisory group? Well, I can tell you, it will not hurt if you put it in. No one is going to judge you or say you got it wrong. And it's better to put it in if you think it's relevant and they can say, okay, that's useful, but only, you know, useful in part, 
rather than you know leave it blank because you say well I don't really I haven't really done anything that official before in my life so I encourage you to think about times when you've been in a group and you've had your opinion listened to that's what advice giving advice is and Rox you might have some thoughts too I think like I just wanted to add that like I think sometimes it can feel like they're looking for someone who's had like a ton of experience in like those government roles or whatever but I have always found that people um when you have like a mix of people and you have people who haven't been in those roles who they're often the people who ask those left of field questions that really like get to the point of something and that there is so much value if you haven't been in these roles before coming like with a fresh perspective so like don't discount yourself because you haven't done something like this before that in itself is actually really valuable and you know earlier you rocks you talked about asking questions and how important that was and there's no such thing as a stupid question i really truly believe that and sometimes you won't know the answer because, yeah, you're new here, but sometimes it's because the assumptions in that question, they're not true for you. So that's why it doesn't make sense to you. But someone asks, say something and you'll think, I know what that means because that doesn't sound right to me. And so by asking the question, you can actually expose the assumptions or potentially some um, discrimination or something that's not inclusive just because you ask a question. Um, so yeah, go for it, is what I say. We want to hear from you, okay? I can't say that enough. Go for it. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm curious about whether you'd like to uh, go back out of screen sharing now and uh, see if there, we have any questions from people who are here with us. Sorry, folks. Um, so we're, nearly out of, we're nearly out of time. So I suppose for me, the question is, if you came on here today, have we answered your questions? So it'd be great if you put on the chat, yes, everything I wanted to know, I now know now. Or if there's anything we haven't answered, I know somebody asked about how will you know if you're successful? Well, we'll find out. And when we put this up on our website, we'll make sure that we include how what will happen next. For example, they'll send you an email or they'll do this or that. We'll find out for you. So if there's anything you wanted to know and we haven't answered your question, put it in the chat and we'll make sure we find out for you. And we'd also be really keen to know if this was useful. Have we answered your questions? And are you now feeling confident to apply? Because I'd like to know that every single person that's on here on today applies. Everyone apply. And we could celebrate that together. I reckon you can stop the screen sharing. You're right, Louise. Finding the right button. I know that you're more of a Teams person, Louise, and this is like when I'm on Teams, like I'm a Zooms person, and when I'm on Teams, I have absolutely no idea where anything is. Should be up the top. It should say, uh, should be up the yeah. top. Um, somebody's asked, Emmons asked, where do you find the application form? And Rox is going to answer. But we can also put the, I think the link might be already on our website. Is that right, Louise? Uh, I believe it's, so I believe it's already on the website. If it's not already, then we will make sure that it is. Great. So um, before we finish, again, I, I'd like to thank you all. I particularly huge thanks to Louise, who's done a mountain of work in getting this up and running. Also to Tammy and some of the other team. And uh, huge thanks to Rox, who is, as you've just worked out, if you haven't met her before, completely awesome. So thank you so much for sharing your um, knowledge today. 
if you go through the application process and you've got questions, you've got our details now, um, you can watch this video again because um, we will upload it onto our website. Perhaps that'll help. You can share it with your friends. How great would it be if you and someone you know were both on the committee and you had each other to talk to? So don't feel you need to apply alone. Encourage your friends to apply. Encourage them to look at this um, uh, video when we upload it. And if you've got questions, you can reach out to us and we'll help you find them and we'll put you in the direction of someone who can because we want you to feel really well supported in actually going through this process, okay? You are not alone. You are more than worth it. And we'd love you to put your hand up and be so proud to say, look, there's someone that was on our webinar now on that committee. You know, I'd like it if everyone was on the committee, but as many of you as possible. So the application to due next week, I think, is it the 5th, Louise? The 5th of October. Yeah, so you've got, you've got a week. It's not a big job, but I know you're probably super busy doing 20,000 things like everyone. So you will need to allow some time and time to reach out to us if you need help. We're literally just a text away or an email away. Rox, did you have any last things you wanted to say? Um, no, just like I think even for me, I've learned stuff in this webinar already. So um, yeah, just good luck to everybody who's applying. And um, I think even if this isn't the thing that happens for you, like there are lots of opportunities like this and young people's voices are being recognised, like their importance is being recognised more and more and there are more and more opportunities. Um, so um, one way to stay in touch for like finding more opportunities is joining um, CHS Youth Health Forum. Um, so a little plug, um, which you can find on our website. Um, but yeah, so there are lots of opportunities um, and this is just the start of it. Thank you so much to Elizabeth and Rox for being here with us today. Thank you to everyone who attended. Thank you for everyone with being with me through my technical difficulties. I am really, really sorry, uh, but very, very grateful for everyone here. I hope you've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And we hope to see you at the next webinar. Good luck to everyone who's applying.